You're innocent until proven guilty. That is, your life, liberty, property cannot be taken from you unless you're convicted of a crime. Now, that's not entirely a myth. It's still largely true when it comes to your life and liberty. But your property? If you're in the wrong place at the wrong time, forget about it. Ever gone to a police auction or one of those government surplus auctions? We consumer reporters always tell people correctly that these are great places to find a bargain. Plenty of good deals here. People can buy bikes for $10, cars for less than $500. From flat screen TVs to Rolex watches to over 20 boats, you name it, they've got it. But where did they get it? Some is abandoned property or property taken from someone convicted of a crime. But some of it I would just call loot that the cops grab. Take the Chevy Silverado that used to belong to Zahir El Ali. Ali's repaired houses and cars in Houston for 30 years. He fixes them up and then sells them. But then he sold a truck like that one to a man on credit. Ali held the title to the car until he was paid, but he never was paid in full because the buyer drove drunk and then got arrested. The cops then seized Ali's truck and kept it. They planned to sell it. Ali can't believe it. Look, I own the truck. The truck done nothing. This is my money. Why are you taking my money? The police say it's their right under the forfeiture law because the person driving the car that day broke the law. I have never seen a truck drink and drive. Every day, I mean, it drink gasoline and that's about it. But it will not drive until I drive it. Uh, I don't think it's the fault of the truck. And they know better. I wouldn't think it's the fault of the truck. Here, here to explain how this works is Ali's lawyer, Scott Bullock. He's with the Institute for Justice. Also from Reason Magazine is Radley Balco. So why they, why isn't it his truck? Somebody drove drunk. He didn't. That's exactly right. It should, it should be his truck. It is his truck, but under this bizarre legal fiction called civil forfeiture, the government can take your property, including your home, your car, your cash, regardless of whether or not you are convicted of a crime. It's led to horrible abuses like the abuse in Houston where you have a wholly innocent property owner swept up in these forfeiture proceedings. And it almost sounds like a gimmick where the authorities get to grab stuff. Well, yes, and the, one of the main reasons why they do this and why they love civil forfeiture is because in Texas and over 40 states and at the federal level, police and prosecutors get to keep all or most of the property that they seize for their own use. So they can use it to improve their offices, buy better equipment. In some states like Texas, even pay their own salaries with this forfeited property. Which gives them a big temptation to take stuff. Your, your law firm has made this cartoon that tries to explain how this system works. Let's just take a look at that. If police suspect that you committed a crime, they can arrest you and put you on trial. At that trial, prosecutors must prove you are guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. But if police suspect your car was involved in a crime, they can take it, sell it, and in most places, pocket the proceeds to pad their budgets. They need not prove you committed any crime. With civil forfeiture, your property is guilty until you prove it innocent to get it back. Carrying too much cash? Police can accuse you of selling drugs or laundering money and seize it. No seize conviction. it without ever taking you to court. And police departments around the country have discovered this is a really good way to raise money. In 1986, the Justice Department's forfeiture fund took in $94 million. Now, it has more than a billion. So with budget cuts coming, this must be very tempting for the police. Well, there, it is tempting, and there are uh, lots of uh, crazy stories about what they do with this money uh, when they have it. Uh, there's a, a district attorney's office in Texas, for example, that used forfeiture money uh, to buy an office margarita machine uh, that won first place at a county fair in a margarita competition. Uh, there's another district attorney in, in uh, Texas who used forfeiture money to take a, a junket to uh, Hawaii for a conference on asset forfeiture. And I understand that he was asked, how could you possibly do this? And he said... His response was, well, a judge signed off on it, so it's okay. Uh, they found out later that the judge that signed off on it actually went with him on the uh, junket to Hawaii. <laughs> and where's the public outrage? 
Well, the public, uh, when they learn about civil forfeiture, is outraged about it. People in this country should not lose their property without being convicted of a crime. And we certainly should not have this perverse incentive system in place for police and prosecutors. America is supposed to be about liberty.